Hi, I'm Jack Shannon. Let's talk Shop Floor Mobile, specifically the scheduling module. Welcome to the Shop Floor Mobile educational series. In this video, Nick Mendolia, our Director of Client Solutions, will demonstrate the scheduling functionality in Shop Floor Mobile. He's going to focus on the user experience of both the shop floor worker and the supervisor. Take it away, Nick. Hi, this is Nick Mendolia. This video is going to focus around the scheduling function. And we'll focus on how a scheduling person or a supervisor or shop foreman would use the scheduling function within shop floor mobile. We're also going to show how we can do labor from a paperless standpoint too. We mentioned that a little bit in the first video, but we concentrated more on the standard way of collecting labor via a paper traveler with barcodes or QR code. But in this video, we'll also touch upon how a labor person could also use paperless uh, transactions to create labor tickets uh, in and out of jobs the same the way they would if they did have a paper traveler. So what we'll do first is we're gonna look in our labor button. And you'll notice also in this video, I'm now running it on a PC as opposed to the previous video from a labor perspective, I was running it on a an iPad screen. This is the same thing. I could still do this on an iPad or a phone, but from a scheduler or a supervisor standpoint, we're imagining somebody sitting in an office with an actual PC or laptop. So from the front screen, you'll notice that I am still logged in as Ali Peterman. I've clocked in for the day, so I am in. Um, however, you know, I'm, I'm just doing that as an example. In this case, as a supervisor, you don't have to be clocked in as an employee at all. And as a supervisor, maybe one of the first things that I would do is come and say, you know, show me all of my employees that are clocked in today and what they're working on. So I can see that Ali, uh, Andy, and Bill are all clocked in and working on jobs. And I can see that um, I do have some red jobs because Andy and Bill have actually been clocked in uh, for more than their threshold. So it's letting me know that I never clocked them out. Okay, so from a labor standpoint first, before we step into the foreman or supervisor or schedule roles, let's pretend that we want to do paperless transactions. So I'm going to go back to my main screen now and from a paperless standpoint, I want to go into my scheduling option. And in here, you'll see a list of all of the resources within shop view that I have. And I can have as many shop views as I want. And, you know, maybe they're related to me as a user or as a labor person or depending on who is logged in to this session can see a different shop view. So you have preferences where you can set for this client what shop view you want to see. And let's say I go in and I want to do an operation in the cutoff saw as an example. So I can just click on that operation and then it brings me to a list of the different operations in the order that they're supposed to be worked on. From a labor standpoint, I really just want to look at the top. Think of this as a paperless dispatch report. The schedule ran overnight or, or in the morning or whatever your schedule happens to be for running the schedule. And it prioritized jobs in the sequence that the schedule feels that they should be done. Uh, so really, if I was following the schedule to a T, I would start at the job that's listed first and then work my way down. Um, so here I can see that I have some indicators and these indicators are really good for me to tell because I can tell with these with this red clock indicator that this job or operation is already late. This little indicator lets me know that also. So it's giving me a visual flag. Uh, I can also see an indicator here of a one. Um, so I have a one, two, and a three because you can also from this screen see what the priority of a job is. And the scheduler would set those or your foreman or supervisor would set priorities for different jobs on here as they come along. Everybody has hot lists on the production floor, right? And, and the standing joke is, you know, there's a hot, hotter and hottest uh, list going around. So, you know, with this, a supervisor or foreman can indicate what those hot jobs are. So you can indicate 
uh, priorities as ones or or twos or threes so that you can specify or let the operator know what jobs are hot on the floor. So even if perhaps, you know, you don't want them working in the order that the schedule says, you can, uh, the operator can look and say, hey, I want to go work on all my ones first uh, and then my twos and then my threes. And if I don't have any priorities at all, then I'll start at the top and work my way down. But the nice thing about this from a paperless standpoint is I can either choose this first operation and you know, from here, either start my setup or my run, the same as I would if I were doing a regular labor transaction. Uh, I can also say, hey, I'm working on multiple jobs. You know, I'm going to work on uh, all three of these because they're all running in the same machine on the same fixture or, or multiple fixtures in the same run, perhaps. Um, but I can choose whichever jobs I'm going to work on or start on and then start my run and it will put me on all three of those. So it's a really nice feature to be able to uh, go in from a paperless standpoint and do your labor transactions. And of course, you know, if I was logged in, then I can come back and stop the jobs uh, and it would ask me, you know, which of those three, if I, if I popped in on all three, I'm stopping. And then I would, I would choose which I'm stopping. Maybe I'm stopping all three at the same time. And you would enter the same information, quantities and deviations and so on. Okay, now we're looking at it from a scheduler perspective. So let's say that I am a scheduling person and you know, we, we come to the same list of jobs here. So one of the things I can do, we, we discussed as a labor person looking for these priorities, but let's say I want to reset some priorities and, and hey, this, this job down here, 2113, is my next priority after the 2104. So I can highlight that job. Hey, that's priority number two. And now I have the number two in that section. So a user or labor person can easily see what they're supposed to work on. Uh, I also, as a supervisor, have the ability, or a foreman, have the ability to move jobs around. Perhaps I want uh, to make sure that the two runs before this job here, because this one is not a priority, even though it was scheduled first. Uh, so I can just as well grab that operation and move it to a different spot. So now it's in the order that I want. I just dragged and dropped. Or I could move multiples. I can select multiple jobs and use my up and down arrows to move a series of operations up or down in the schedule. So the shop foreman or the supervisor has the ability to manually adjust the schedule that Visual put out. So you're basically asking Visual, hey, you know, give me your interpretation of all the jobs that I should do in what order according to all of the information that we gave you. And then, hey, I'll take it from here once you show it to me. And now I can manipulate and resequence operations based on how I want to run the shop floor or, or perhaps things that are changing on the fly before the next schedule runs. I still have the opportunity to adjust my schedule. We also have these flags or visual indicators of some things that are important to us. And yes, there's several of them and you may look at them and say, well, how am I supposed to know what those all mean? Uh, it's real simple, depending on whichever screen you're in. If you hit the help button, it's gonna take you right to a quick help and kind of explain what those flags mean. And different screens have different flags with different meanings. So depending on the screen you're in, you'll get a different help file explaining what those flags are. But you do, you know, learn pretty quickly of what they mean. And it's a real quick indicator that gives you a lot of information uh, about the status of that job. So I can tell that, you know, the job is late. Uh, the green material means that I do have material for it. And the material, because I have a check mark here, tells me that it is at this operation. So it has moved from the previous operation to this operation. Um, this is generally, you know, the cutoff saw is generally the first operation. So these would always be checked uh, in most cases, unless uh, there's an operation prior to it, perhaps. Um, I can see that there's a person logged in on it because they it's, it's a, a person that's colored as opposed to um, uh, just a blank. And I can also tell that there are documents associated with this operation. So if I wanted to see what those documents were, I can go to my documents. We covered that in the first video, so I'm not going to go into each one of these. 
uh, but you have the ability to go and look at the documents associated to it, the specifications, which would be your work instructions and so on. Uh, if I want to see who's on that or what labor is being applied to it, I can go right to my labor tab and I can see that Ali is logged on to this job as we speak. Okay, I can see uh, the issues with materials perhaps on this um, and maybe not this one, but here's one where the material is a problem. I don't have the material for this particular operation. So maybe I want to dig deeper into, well, you know, what is my material shortage here? So I can go and look at my material and I can see that this quarter inch round stock is what's causing me a problem. Uh, maybe I want to dig deeper into that and look at the supply orders for that round stock and make sure that I have some purchase orders out there for it. And I can see that I have planned orders out there. There's no purchase orders, but they're all planned. So maybe I need to discuss this with the planner and say, hey, where's this material? How come you haven't released the purchase order for this planned order? However, a planned a planning person can also be using this tool to see where materials are short and do I need to purchase items. One of the other options you have as a scheduler or planner or foreman or supervisor is uh, preferences. So in the preferences, while there are several preferences, including deciding, you know, what, um, you know, if I, if I go over to my labor preferences, as an example, I can see several things. Like if you have multiple sites, you can, you can default what site you want to see, but you also have these efficiency warning thresholds, uh, which is a pretty neat tool because that's where generally you would run a report to see what efficiencies were happening, but you can actually set this up so that your view of when looking at these operations, you can tell where the efficiency is below what it should be. And it will put another indicator out there to let you know that, Hey, this is running more time than it should take. So uh, it's, a, it's just another way of being able to manage the shop floor. And, you know, is that operation running longer than it should be? Or was the estimated time wrong? Uh, but it gives you that opportunity to fix things such as that. So that's a quick look at the scheduling functionality from uh, a labor perspective and shop foreman, supervisor and scheduling perspective, and perhaps even from a material planner uh, standpoint. Thanks, Nick. Be sure to check out all of our videos in our educational series. The links are below.